Hey folks, welcome once again to the RBL Studios. My name is Jerry Stevenson. I am the Chief Redneck in Charge at the Redneck Barbecue Lab, McGee's Crossroad, Benson, North Carolina. And I'm here today to show you folks how to make Cajun cornbread stuffed pork chops. But before we get into the how-tos and what ifs and all that on how to run this recipe, love for you folks to go right down here right now and like this video. Share it with your friends. We're doing it for you guys. It's kind of inspire you to get outside, cook, try some different stuff, burn some meat, make some people happy, make some smiles, make some memories. Subscribe to our channel. I know you already probably have, but if you're not subscribed to our channel, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Press on that little bell button down there as well. It'll notify you when the new videos drop. Um, and please leave your comments as to what you thought about this video suggestions as to what you would like to see us attempt to make here in the RBL studios for you guys. So let's pop right into this recipe. This is one of those things that I uh, have done before in my head, but it's kind of a mashup of a lot of different influences that I've had while I've been on the road. Um, I love pork loins. You guys know if you've watched our videos before, you know I like stuff in pork loins. I like doing the bacon wrap pork loins. I like stuffing them with, with different ingredients like mushroom, druxel, if you've seen this recipe before, and rolling them up, tying them up, and smoking them. And it makes a really cool presentation. Well, this presentation is kind of like the same thing. A lot of times when you go into these high-end steakhouses, they always talk about these double cut pork chops. And you're like, whoa, what is that? Is that something special? Because you usually don't find that in your grocery store. You can find it at your butcher's market if you got a local butcher. And all it really is, is it's just a thick cut pork chop. And for a person like me that really loves pork, a double cut pork chop is like one of my favorite things in the world um, when you cook it on the grill and you get it right. So this recipe that I'm going to show with you guys today, it's kind of a mashup between that pork loin that I love so much, and then some of the Cajun influence that I've had while being on the road, um, combined with a little bit of a cornbread that we make that you may be able to find over here at our, uh, over here at our uh, RBL Provision Company. Um, this is the cornbread you guys know. If you come to the uh, Redneck Barbecue Lab, this is our cornbread that we use uh, in the lab. And uh, this is one of the other things I'm kind of mashing up into this recipe to show you guys how to use this instead of just eating it. So let's hop into this video. Um, first thing I've got is I got a pork loin. I went ahead and trimmed. I took the, the sinew off of it and some of the other meat that was just kind of on it. And this is just a, you know, the, the loin right in the middle of the animal. It's not the tenderloin. The tenderloin's a little smaller and this is probably not good for a tenderloin recipe. This is a pork loin. There is a difference. The loin is the bigger muscle. The tenderloin's kind of in, uh, in the middle of the animal, a little further in and is smaller. Um, what I want to do for a double cut pork chop is, is I want probably a two and a half cut inch pork chop. So I know by doing my chicken recipes before in competition, which you guys will probably see here, our competition chicken recipe, I know that my fingers all the way across are about two and uh, a quarter inches. So I'm going to mark it, come back a little bit and mark it like that. I want to do the same thing here again. It's kind of a little trick that I do. I just kind of cut and mark my meat. And that way, when I get to the end, if I got to cheat a little, I can make the end, which is a little smaller, a little bigger or a little smaller. So I'm just going right down the line, making little marks like that. Then I get to the end. You see, if I go ahead and I cut that right now, this this will be like a little itty bitty piece. So I'm just going to leave this hole and um, just go ahead and trim this up just like this. So really kind of easy to do. Um, like I said, just kind of lay it out and it, it will help you out later on. Um, not only helps you out because they all look the same, they all kind of should cook the same, should kind of cook the same, except for this little guy right here. But once we mash it down, it'll probably be all right. So next thing I want to do is, so while I've got these right here is, as I actually do have another knife, is I want to go ahead and I want to cut a pocket in it and I'm going to come midway Midway on the, the out, outside, not the inside, but the outside of the loin, if it's laying just the way I cut it right here, I'm gonna make my incisions right here. 
But what I want to do is, is I want to come in with this knife and I don't want to go all the way through. I want to come about, see, I've got about a half an inch right there. And I just want to kind of come in here like this and just take my time. I just want to make a little pocket, just a little opening. And so it goes a little like this. And this is one of the things where I say, do as I say and not what I do. It's probably better if you do this on the table than in your hand, just in case you don't push it all the way through. So nice sharp knife, what, what could go wrong, right? So I'm gonna very gently take my time and push it through and I can kind of feel and kind of see about where it's at. If you do like that, that's another little thing, another little pro tip. I see about how far my knife goes in and you can kind of see how I'm getting that half inch. Follow me? Okay. So we'll hop back in there. I can find where I went in at. And kind of just do like that. Cut that pork loin. Just like that. Get it right down the end. And now you can see I basically made a little pocket in there where I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with my next little step. Um, as to what I'm going to do with the stuffing in there. So go ahead and put that one right there. We'll repeat on this one. I'll do this one overhead for you folks. Just remember you try to like, like I said, try to like remember about how far that blade goes in there. And that way, you know, you don't go too deep. And you know what? If you do go too deep, it's okay. It's all right. You're not going to get kicked off Survivor Island or anything like that. It's like, uh-oh, you know. Um, pork chops is like one of my favorite things in the world. My mother makes an outstanding fried pork chop, um, pork chops and applesauce. That's, that's one of the things we, uh, we actually do at the lab there at McGee's Crossroads. We do a uh, French uh, bone-in uh, pork chop that uh, I really, really, really enjoy with some baked apples. We've got a little baked apple recipe with some pretty cool ingredients in that, some spices and flavors that just kind of pops. When you take a little bite of that pork, a little bite of that apple, it just works. And um, this is one of those recipes where maybe some baked smoked apples or something like that. be a really good accompaniment. I am speaking French again. Accompaniment, accompany uh, this uh, recipe. So go ahead and knock this out. Get that one in there. And now we are ready to go with the stuffing. So for the stuffing, as you kind of already know, we told you folks about is, is we're gonna start out with our cornbread, our uh, Redneck Barbecue Lab cornbread that you can find um, at these local purveyors right here. Uh, as well as we've got some online merchants that can send this to you. Um, probably what I got here is about 12 pieces and I'm just gonna kind of rough break this up right now. I'm gonna stir this up a little later when we start uh, adding the other ingredients. This cornbread was cooked yesterday, so it's kind of a day old, but it's very moist. That's one of the things about our cornbread recipe that I'm very proud of. We worked on it for a long time to come up with the right recipe where if you did cook a whole pan of cornbread and if you couldn't eat it all at one sitting, which a lot of people don't, um, you could save it for something like this the next day. Uh, we will be doing a video in the future uh, that will be a oyster stuffing uh, for our holiday menu that we'll be doing. Um, some folks already know some of the things we've talked about doing here. Um, and our holiday menu is one of the things that we're kind of looking forward to in our series. If you are on this YouTube channel and you go to some of the other videos, you'll notice we've kind of made some different stuff on there for you. We've done some series with grilling. Um, we've done some series with uh, some vegetables, some side dishes, as well as some desserts. So that's another thing, one of the reasons why you want to go and stick to this YouTube channel. Um, the next ingredient that I'm going to add into this stuff I'm putting in this pork chop is some onions and jalapeno that I diced and sweated here. The jalapenos, I did remove the seeds. Depending on what you want um, heat-wise, you can leave them in. I just took them out for this recipe. Uh, I get enough heat with the uh, ingredients that I'll be using later on the outside to season it. Um, why is this Cajun cornbread? Well, let me tell you why. It's a great question. This right here is uh, some andouille sausage. Andouille sausage was something that I found uh, not too long ago in my travels um, when I was down in um, 
Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, it's a Cajun sausage that's uh, got a lot of uh, cayenne pepper and different spices in it. And it works really well with this cornbread. It kind of not only helps it kind of bind together, but it also kind of gives it a little, little flair, a little pop, doesn't make it quite as dull. Um, Spice-wise, I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic powder to this, as well as a little bit of black pepper. We're looking at about a teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon of black salt, or a teaspoon of granulated garlic. I'd say garlic powder, let me check that. It was granulated garlic, about a teaspoon of granulated garlic and a teaspoon of black pepper. Um, the next uh, ingredient we're going to add is rubbed sage. It's a classic ingredient with your cornbread stuffings. Um, it's one of the things that I, I really like with mine as well. It just kind of uh, gives it that little pop and that little earthy taste in the background, which goes well with the pork. Next thing I'm going to add to this is a little bit, a little bit more salt, just about probably a teaspoon of salt. Um, quarter tablespoon of butter, quarter tablespoon, quarter stick of butter. That'd be four tablespoons, unless I'm off on my math again, which is very likely. We'll go ahead and kind of incorporate this all together. I've got a little water. Um, a lot of times, like I said, with this stuff, and what we want it to do is just come together. We don't want it too runny. We don't want it too mushy. There's going to be some juice that will come out of the pork itself, and we want it to kind of combine with the... Uh, with the uh, stuffing that we're making here. So I'm gonna add just a touch of water. Probably about a quarter of a cup of water put to that. And I just want it to kind of come together. And you can see um, when, it's, when it comes together, you can kind of grab it and do like that and squeeze it. And it's got some moisture as you can see, but it just doesn't compact. You know, if you get it too much and you can see the moisture in my hand, it's just too much in this. And like I said, you will get more moisture in this. You won't get less. So, all right. Now that we got that and made a proper mess here in RBL Studios, let's go ahead and stuff these pork chops. Grab a spoon right here. Um, I made a bunch of stuff, and as you can tell, and this is something that later on you can use um, to uh, do other stuff if you like. You don't have to use it all on this. Um, I'm using a tablespoon right here, um, just kind of taking this and, and pushing it in there, packing it in, um, getting it in there kind of in the corners and the crevices. You can use your fingers. Fingers are, fingers are proper utensils when it comes to eating barbecue, right? All right, so there's one pork chop. And you can see why they're called double, double cut pork chops. This one I'm gonna open up just a little bit further and get it quite as wide as I wanted to initially. You can see why they're called double cut because boy, they're thick. This is some North Carolina pork here. That we were lucky to uh, purchase. We're blessed here in North Carolina with not only uh, abundance of uh, vegetables and fruit farmers, but uh, we have a tremendous amount of pork farmers. Pork is, is one of the things that North Carolina is known for, producing good pork, a good, good pork stock, good herd here. All right, eight. I'm not gonna do all these. I'm gonna do this last one and go on to the next thing. As you can see, um, it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience. Uh, one of the things that you can do with this recipe is, is this is like I say before, a lot of times you can make these beforehand. You can make these and put them into uh, the freezer and freeze them, pull them out later and, and do them. You know, just make sure you've got a good vacuum sealer or something like that to wrap them. Um, you know, it's one of those things that, one of those I'm, I'm looking for at nighttime, something to eat, and you can have that aha moment. Um, I'm gonna skip, I'll get these, I'll come back to these here in a second, show you guys the next thing. Don't wanna bore you too much with me, how to stuff a pork, pork chop, that double thick pork chop, but I think you kinda got the gist of it. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna use is, 
is we're going to use a combination on this is I just went ahead and I put uh, half of our all-purpose competition rub uh, into a shaker along with half of our chicken and rib rub uh, into this shaker, just kind of a 50-50. Um, basically, one's a little sweeter, one's a little saltier, and instead of kind of adding salt to this or adding a little sugar to this, I just put them together. It's one of the tricks I do a lot of times. A lot of our sauces and rubs, people that know me have seen the videos and stuff know that I'm constantly changing stuff around and, and trying different combinations and percentages. I'm gonna go ahead and use this 50-50 mixture on this pork chop. I'm gonna season it rather well on the outside. Um, reason being is, is that you're, you're not gonna be getting a whole lot of rub for each bite. Flip it over, get it that way. Right, so there you have it. There is uh, how to uh, make these double cut pork chops, how to make the stuffing that goes into them, and then finally how to season them. Now the next thing that we wanna do with these is we wanna let them sit just for a little bit. This doesn't have to sit a whole lot. We wanna kinda of start sweating, kinda of getting a little reaction on the outside. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna cut the smoker on outside. We're gonna use our Traeger pellet grill today. I absolutely love that Traeger pellet grill. Uh, we'll be using a combination of a third cherry pellets, a third hickory pellets, and a third maple pellets on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up. I'm gonna let these sit here on the counter just for about 15 minutes while that Traeger warms up. It'll get up to 250 degrees pretty fast. And then we're going to put these on the pit. So we'll see you guys downstairs um, when we throw these on the pit. Okay, folks, we've got our Traeger grill going with our cherry and our uh, hickory maple uh, pellets in there. We've got our uh, stuffed pork chops, these Cajun stuffed pork chops ready to go. They sweat it out a little bit. You can see them, they're look wet looking right now. Now, time to just throw them on there, let them smoke. We're probably going to leave them on the smoker for about an hour before we come and check them. That's probably about what it is. We're shooting for internal temperature on these for about 145. We really don't want to get above 150. That's a safe uh, zone right now to eat pork at. So about 145, we should cruise up 150 and be done. So we at least uh, sit in there for a little bit and smoke, and then we'll come back and check them out later, see how we did. All right, folks, our uh, Pork chops are ready. They're up at temp. They're right about 142, 143 degrees. The last like five minutes of the cook, I'm gonna go ahead and put on some sauce. I've got some of the Redneck Barbecue Lab Grand Champion sauce. Uh, that's what I just kind of grabbed today. That's what I was wanting to uh, put on it. So let's go ahead and sauce these things up and uh, let them let the, the sauce tack up and sit up for a little bit. So, boy, they smell good. Traeger Grill, a lot of people say the Traeger Grill doesn't put a lot of smoke on the food. And I'm like one of these people that says, yeah, I have, I've not found that it's, put, it's not put enough smoke on my food. I mean, sometimes I think it can put too much smoke on my food. Really like it because I keep this clean, it's reliable. The, uh, the heat source in it just kind of keeps the food uh, cooking really, really, really like steadily, not a real high temperature spike or anything like that. I love real pork chop. I think I've said that like 50 times today. So we'll get this just like I said, just a little bit of sauce on the outside. We'll let this sit for about five minutes in there. Just tack it up just a little bit more. Come back out here and check on them. They'll be ready to off about five minutes. So there you go, folks. Can't wait. See you cuties in about five minutes. All right, 
Five minutes has gone by after we put that Redneck Barbecue Lab Grand Champion sauce on them. Let's see what they look like. Oh yeah, they're pretty. Who says Traeger doesn't throw out a lot of smoke? They tacked up nice. It's still got a little sheen on it from that barbecue sauce right there. And uh, I think they're ready to go upstairs. So let's go ahead and get these off. Let's go ahead and get them, uh, get them upstairs to the table. Let's see how we did. Welcome back uh, to the RBL Studios, folks. Here's the star of today's show. These are the Cajun cornbread stuffed double cut pork chops that uh, we did today here. They smell great. <laughs> I mean, smoky, porky, saucy, soon to be in my belly goodness. Um, <laughs> so let's recap how we got to this place here real quick. Uh, we have a pork loin, boneless pork loin that we cut into the double cut chops. They're about two and a, and a, a quarter inch thick. Um, I sliced them. I cut them open very carefully with a paring knife and made a little pocket inside of them halfway. Uh, we made a simple cornbread stuffing using the Redneck Barbecue Lab uh, cornbread mix, which you can find right here at theredneckbarbecuelab.com. Find our sauce. Um, you can find our cornbread there at retailers. They can mail it to you as well as the sauce. Um, we took that cornbread, we added uh, some uh, jalapenos and onions that we had sweated together, along with a little andouille sausage, that's our Cajun rift. I love andouille sausage, boudin, Ronnie's boudin down in uh, Baton Rouge. Shout out to Brad, man, you guys got it going on. Those Cajun sausages are it. Um, and I incorporated a little bit of that andouille sausage uh, into this, along with a little butter, if it wasn't rich enough and a little water, uh, some sage, some garlic, uh, black pepper, um, <clears throat> and uh, a little salt. Um, that was basically my stuffing mix. You guys can make whatever you want inside your stuffing mix today. That's just what, what I like, and that's what I did to, to get here. I took that stuffing mix, stuffed it, coated the outside in this with the Redneck Barbecue Lab 50-50 uh, mixture of the original competition rub, that's the Red Bottle original competition rub, along with the World Championship Chicken and Rib Rub, uh, Redneck Barbecue Lab World Championship Chicken and Rib Rub, mix the two. One of them's a bit more salty, one's a bit more sweet, so I just put them together. I do that in combinations a lot of times, and I encourage you folks to experiment at home with that too, and see what you come up with, and leave some of your comments down here, what you found out, how those combinations work. But with me, it just works with this. It gives this pork really a great color, some saltiness, a little sweet on the outside to help caramelize. Um, we threw these onto our Traeger grill, um, rocking some cherry, hickory, and maple uh, pellets, uh, 250 degrees. These took about an hour and 30 minutes, give or take. Um, we pulled them about 140. We put a little of the Redneck Barbecue Lab uh, Grand Champion sauce on this. Um, I just wanted something a bit more smoky and peppery on this. You know, normally I usually use the red sauce, our sweet sauce on pork. But today, just wanted something a bit more peppery to kind of complement that andouille sausage. So we went with our Grand Champion sauce, which is a smoky black pepper kind of tangy sauce that um, I love on beef, but it works really well in this recipe. Um, gave it a little coating, threw it back into that uh, Traeger grill, hit that smoke feature that it's got. I mean, it's got plenty of smoke on it, folks. Those Traeger grills, like I said, they will lay some smoke on stuff. but putting that sauce on it and having that wet surface and then throwing that smoke setting on that Traeger grill, it puts another envelope of smoke, another seasoning on the outside, a clean seasoning, not a creosote seasoning, a really clean, nice tasting floral because we can smell it right now, seasoning that's making my belly smile and my salivary gland salivate. So, um, one thing left to do, y'all know what time it is. That's right. It's, uh, cook time this is the cook and it's like eeny meeny miny mo so we're gonna go with mo today see how we did it here um the uh the pork and uh that, that sauce is one of the combinations that you guys may may find out a little later you keep watching these videos what uh how i found out about how i like that combination 
of that grand champion sauce with pork. Hint, hint, hint. Um, there we have it. Man, it smells good. I'm sitting here salivating. and you can see there's a little smoke ring on the outside of this pork. Um, that smoke ring right there is from that Traeger. Um, and we cook, you guys know, we cook on, um, on uh, baking pans, but they've got the cooling racks, the baking racks on it. And that shows you right there how the smoke can go around it and still smoke your meat and um, allow someone like me to not have to worry about the big mess of the cleanup after, after we smoke this stuff. So I'm trying my best to cut this to get a slice. It's really, really delicate, this, this pork. And see kind of how we did here. Try to get a little bite of both here. Here we go. All right, folks, it's a tough part of this job. Man, that's good. There's like this uh, this fight going on in my mouth right now, my brain. Um, it's like like North Carolina is famous for basketball. It's like Tar Heels versus Duke. You know, it's the big big rivalry here, and that's kind of what's going on here. It's like I don't know which one's better. I don't know if it's the the pork or that cornbread stuffing, that Cajun cornbread stuffing. Okay, it covers all four bases of barbecue, like I said. It's got the smoke, it's got the sweet, it's got the heat, and it's got the salt. But this cornbread adds another flavor component to this. It's really, like the inside's really moist to this, and then on the outside I'm getting some of that, that caramelized um, rub and that caramelized sauce on the outside, and then it combines with that moist and just kind of this flavor explosion in my mouth. It's really, really good. Really, really good. Very happy with this, once again. Very, very, very happy with this. So there you have it, folks. Um, this is our uh, Cajun cornbread stuffed pork chop, my take on it. And um, hopefully you guys can do the same at home. Mix up these ingredients. You know, this isn't the Bible. This is just basically kind of a roadmap, like, hey, go this way. Use the techniques, use the methods, mix stuff up, put some stuff in there, try it how you like it. Apples, you know, cranberries, whatever. You know what I mean? Whatever you like, try it. Leave your comments below some of the stuff you guys have tried this recipe out and what you think tastes good in there. And uh, I'd love to read them. So once again, just thank you guys for being here at the RBL Studios today. I am Jerry Stevenson. I am the Chief Redneck in Charge of the Redneck Barbecue Lab in McGee's Crossroad in Benson, North Carolina. Along here with my friend Mike Baker. He's the wizard that puts all this stuff together. Event Webcasting is the company that does all this. Um, like this video, share this video, subscribe to our channel, click on that bell for notifi notification. Comments and suggestions, please. You can find our products, like I said, at theredneckbarbecuelab.com. Find our sauce. Um, if, you, if a purveyor doesn't have it, there's several on there that ship can get it to you. I'm ready to get busy on that right now, but just guys, keep remember, keep being kind, keep passing those smiles, keep being positive. We need it right now, the world needs it. We can make the change just starting with a simple smile. We can do a lot. Love you guys, we'll see you guys later.